gimbal like the RS2 can help you achieve stunning shots on the wedding day. But more than that, it can replace some of the common tools of wedding filmmakers, like monopods or sliders. Today I'm gonna to give you several key tips on using a gimbal for a wedding. Now I do wanna talk about my setup with the RS2 real quick. I have these handles flipped up. Uh, the standard way is having them flipped down. The reason I like them up is because I get more variety in my camera height. So I can hold on the normal grip right here and if I want the camera a little lower, rather than kind of trying to go like this and lower it down, I can just go here. The camera is a little bit lower. It's a little more comfortable to shoot at a lower level. It's great to have an external monitor when you're working with your gimbal. Now, you may be thinking, well, how come I just can't, you know, pop out the screen on the back of the camera here and then move it around? Well, and you can. The problem is, as you start to move this around uh, mid-shot, it's your, your, your touch on the camera obviously affects the gimbal and it will affect your shot. You'll have some jittery footage because of that. With an external monitor uh, that has a nice little swivel head on it, you can get much bigger movements because you're able to maintain your view from top to bottom as you're shooting in the middle of the shot. Now one of the key things to using a gimbal is to have very good technique. If you're bouncy and stiff while you're walking, your shot is gonna look bouncy. So you need to walk smoothly. And the best way to do that is by bending your knees slightly and moving slowly. You always wanna walk forwards or backwards, never side to side. And if we're doing a lateral shot where we're tracking, you wanna turn your body and walk this way. I remember when I first started, I thought any shot could just be made better because now I'm moving the camera, but I stopped thinking about the composition. I stopped making a beautiful image. So when you start moving the camera, think about composition first, make it look good if it were a still picture or a static shot, then add your movement to that beautiful composition and your images will be much better. So for lens choices on a wedding day, I like to use the 16 to 35 as my go-to. This works great across the board for establishings all the way up to the reception dancing. But I also like to use a 50 prime sometimes for things like bride prep. And I will occasionally go to some longer lenses as well. As you experiment, you'll start to find which focal lengths you prefer. But the main thing to remember is your longer lenses are gonna compress the scene and make parallax in the background feel more evident. Whereas a wider lens, you're gonna feel foreground movement more. So right when you show up at an event, one of my favorite things to do is go ahead and get establishing shots. I like to find a good angle to shoot the building from. I like to find some foreground. And then many times I'll do a nice push through and it's always good to do several takes of your establishing shots, maybe from a couple, couple different angles. Sometimes you don't know what's gonna be the best angle until you shoot there. So play around a little bit with this. When it comes time to dress prep, I can use the RS2 as a static shot. I can hold and get several frames, and then I can start to move. Now I like to use a shotgun mic during the prep, but to get more stable footage, I take it off the camera and mount it to the handle. This slightly limits the range of motion, but I only do this at the beginning of the day to get better audio. When it's time to put the shoes on, I love to get low by holding the trigger, turning the camera down, getting right down near the shoes. Now sometimes, we'll do a first look with the dad. The dad's coming to see the bride for the first time. So on a situation like that, maybe I'll start walking out and come back and then land in a composition that shows the two of them in a profile. And that's a very effective use of your gimbal. You're not moving the camera too much, you're just moving it with purpose in order to cover the day better. Now you can add a lot of energy to a first look by walking behind the bride as she walks up to her groom. But I never like to do this on the real first look. I like to do it as a rewalk after the first look is done. One cool trick is after you get a few steps of her walking from behind, you can say, okay, pause for one second, flip around, do another shot, another angle from her face, and then bring it all together in the edit for a really emotional moment. Now when it comes to the portrait session, one of my favorite go-to shots is to have the couple walking. I'll tell them to look at one another and you can turn this into three different shots. Not only can you just walk with them as they're walking straight towards the camera, 
but you can also go to the side and then shoot over the groom's chest towards the bride's eyes and then flip to the other side and do the same. Now be sure to use some of the groom's body in the foreground and vice versa. This adds some more depth to the shot and keeps the context between the two of them. Now another go-to shot is what I call a vertical pivot. I'll do this with the bride sometimes just as a sort of hero shot that can be useful in the film. It requires a very long lens, about 100 millimeter. You don't even really have to walk to pull this shot off. You really wanna focus on having a nice composition coming down and tilting up. If you're going to be using your gimbal during the processional, you need to coordinate really well with the photographer and the rest of your team. Uh, one key thing is to try to always stay on the same side of the aisle. If you're all on the same side, you will be less likely to be in the background of their shots. Now one of my favorite go-to's, no matter what the environment is for the ceremony, is to track the bride and her dad coming down the aisle. And as she walks past me, pan with her and reveal the ceremony and all of the guests there. Now for the kiss at the ceremony, I like to add a slow push in, just moving forward. And then I like to pause and be ready for when they come down the aisle. For focal length, 35 mil can be really good. I like to be kind of wide as they walk back down the aisle. You really want to feel the guests clapping, maintaining your nice composition as they come down the aisle. If you're standing and waiting, I find myself kind of resting it on my belt or something during the day, almost like this. This is going to keep you kind of ready to go. And then as soon as it's time to shoot, here you go. And when it comes to shooting reception details, one of my favorite things is to have large, wide establishing shot of the reception. I like to close the legs down, tilt my screen, and we're just getting big open shots of the room. One of the tricks for doing more precise movements is to make a wide base, compose your shot, and then pivot our weight from one leg to the other. We're moving around like this as we pivot the camera. And you can see how this is a lot like a slider, but better because you have more range of movement. If the wedding party is gonna have a really fun call out, uh, sometimes it's fun to go on a really wide lens and track with them. You can add a lot of energy. And then when the couple comes out for the first dance, I have my second shooter on a longer lens on a tripod or monopod. One of the best things you can do is to back up off the dance floor as a way to feel everybody in the room watching the couple. Your subject is still the couple, but you can add so much more to the shot by backing up and letting the shot breathe a little bit. One of my favorite moments during the first dance is to create two shots in one. This can be done during the father-daughter, mother-son dance uh, or the first dance. But what you need to do is look off to the side, find someone that's watching the couple and start your shot on them. Use your peripheral vision to know where, know where your subject is. Back away, pull away, and then land your shot on the dancing. Now, it's fun to add camera movement to dancing. This is the time of the night that you get to play around. Mix up your shots and just really experiment. And you can mix it all together to have a really energetic reception coverage. And that is how we use the RS2 at a wedding. And I hope that's given you some good ideas on how to use a gimbal in your own films. Until next time, have fun shooting.